This is one of the more deeply flavored fried rice that I've had. The one that Uncle Roger did looks very good, but it's also very basic in flavor. This is intense, it's layered, it's got many, many layers of flavor. Uncle Roger, I wanna know, how did I do? Today we're going to be reviewing Joshua Wiseman's Egg Fried Rice with Uncle Roger commentating. I've been wanting to review this video for a while and today we're going to do so. If you are new guys, welcome to my channel. My name is James. I've been cooking for many many years. I have plenty of other recipes on my channel as well, as well as my cookery course if you would like to know a little more about cooking. The link will be in the description down below and if you'd like the video or if you'd like to help support the channel then be sure to share, like and subscribe and of course check out my Patreon or channel memberships. So let's start with the video. Let's begin. For the record, I actually love Uncle Roger. I've watched him multiple times and I find him very entertaining. Oh, thank you, thank you, nephew Joshua. He even dressed up like me, fuyo. But his orange polo, not the same as Uncle Roger orange polo. <laughs> I actually have the exact same polo shirt that Joshua is wearing. I don't really wear that shirt that often because if I walk around town here with an orange polo shirt, people are gonna think I'm a tourist and <laughs> I don't wanna look like a tourist. Get from random shop, but his orange polo have that little man on horse logo. Let's see where he get it from. Hi, uh, 85 pound for polo. He think money go on tree, so expensive. Who he think he is? Uncle Roger can buy that little man on horse for three pound? and iron on shit. And see, he also wearing Rolex. What is this? Is this egg fried rice video or fashion show? Personally, I would not be wearing a Rolex to make egg fried rice and I just wouldn't be wearing it while I'm in the kitchen cooking because you can damage it pretty easily, knocking it on things and you know. Double onioning this one, all right, I respect that. Ooh. When he chopped that mm. green onion, his hand was like this and he was just like... Yeah. <laughs> this I agree with Joshua. The way that Uncle Roger was chopping, <laughs> you could lose a few fingers very easily. Uncle Roger single, very confident in my right hand. <laughs> <gasps> Sorry children. The book, all by the book. You saute his veg, soften, eggs go in. But it's almost all... Look at this, the headphone not even plugged in. He just giving the illusion of listening, just like me in my previous marriage. We have the data that we need. Uncle Roger, that's a good looking fried rice. Now, I do think that we can do better. I haven't reviewed that yet, but we need to, to see how we made it. Before we can even start making your fried rice, you need, well, rice. It must be leftover cold rice. Correct, correct. Cooked. With that said, let's talk about how to cook your rice. Uncle Roger is correct. The holy grail of rice cookery is a beautiful rice cooker. <gasps> Is Uncle mm -hmm. Roger hallucinating? This is first mm. white guy with rice cooker. Uncle Roger impressed because he using same brand of rice cooker as Uncle Roger. It's this one, <laughs> the Soji Rushi baby elephant pan. It is nice being able to have, like I said, the right equipment to make things. It's not a necessity, at least for some people to own a rice cooker, but if you do have one, it does make things a lot easier because it will cook the rice, especially when you have a good make like this, it will cook the rice perfectly if you follow the instructions. If Uncle Roger go to your house and I see you have baby elephant rice cooker, mm. I know your rice gonna be good. But this rice cooker may be too expensive for some niece and nephew. If niece and nephew poor, just buy random $25 rice cooker and then get Soji Rushi when you have your shit together. This is my Soji Rushi and the link will be in the description. To make the rice, place a nice medium grain <gasps> white Colander. Rice in a metal sieve. Si a colander is a little different. This is a sieve in English, a chinois in French. A colander has bigger holes than this, but it's okay. Put over a bowl, fill it up with water, toss. Okay, okay. He just using colander to wash rice, not to drain rice like BBC food. This one okay. But look at him, so much equipment just to wash rice. Uncle Roger, I just washed my rice in rice cooker bowl. No need extra equipment to wash rice high. Uh... Mm, I agree with Uncle Roger. With this, you can do it like Joshua was doing it. It's easy not to lose extra bits of rice, but it does make more dishes in the end. And if you don't want to clean more dishes, doing it like Uncle Roger does it because you don't need to be using a uh, chinois. Place it in a rice cooker and add roughly equal parts of water. This was two cups of medium grain, so I used about two cups of filtered water, but you can always use the finger test. Ah, he used finger, use finger. 
like a notepad. A lot of people have been telling me, oh, but everyone's fingers are different sizes. Yeah, exactly, but that's not supposed to be. The finger test, the knuckle test, is not an exact measurement. It's an estimate. I mean, literally, it's a little difficult to make something perfectly exact unless you're using a rice cooker. You can get good rice without a rice cooker, but with one like this, a um, more expensive one, you can make perfect rice. In the end, it depends on what you want. You can wing it by doing it without the rice cooker, which you can still make good rice, or you buy one and um, happy days. Now close the lid, start the rice cooker, dance to the song of its people. Uncle Roger, rice cooker, sing the same song also. See? Before K-pop, this is all Uncle Roger Listen to. Rice cooker pop. For our fried rice sauce, get a small bowl, add a one inch knob of galangal that's been finely grated, one teaspoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of Malaysian sambal, three cloves of finely chopped garlic, one tablespoon of sweet soy sauce, and one and a half tablespoons of double aged soy sauce. This sauce looks good better than cowboy can secret sauce. Ingredient all correct, but why he measuring everything higher? Joshua's sauce does look very good. Kent's, the end product looked good. The end product did look good, but the sauce, for me, it just didn't look very um, appetizing. One tablespoon of one teaspoon of three cloves of one and a half tablespoons. I think he has to learn from Uncle Roger, favorite chef, uh. chef one. When you're a great chef, you don't measure <laughs> things, you just throw. <laughs> Nephew Joshua, just throw, measure this, measure that, so anal. And he washed rice with that special colander machine equipment thing, hi -ya. Now you have 25 more things you have to wash up. I think this Joshua guy never clean his own kitchen. He like torturing <laughs> his cleaner. Cooking? is about feeling, especially in the savory kitchen. We still follow recipes, but you have to be very precise if you're in pastry. In pastry, you cannot wing it. You have to know the exact measurements because you can follow a recipe, but still that taste, especially for a chef who has made that recipe, let's say a thousand times, if it's a little off, you need to adjust it. And sometimes ingredients change, the intensity of spices as well change. So, you know, you always have to taste, you always have to check. Now we have another important thing to do before we make our fried rice, but first let me show you my walks. Gordon might have two walks, but I have three walks. For you, like Uncle Gordon. Nephew Joshua is walk fuck boy also. Hmm. I hope he more faithful to his girlfriend than to his walk. I haven't seen that video of Joshua cooking with his girlfriend, but just her holding his knife like this, cutting the uh, jalapeno. We should watch that one. <laughs> we should review that one. Fill it with about three cups of vegetable oil and your shallots and begin constantly stirring with chopsticks. And as soon as your shallots begin to reach a golden brown, immediately remove them from the oil and those are your fried shallot. Like I said in the last video with Joshua, the best way to get the crispy onions there's different methods if you're using a lot. Um, I won't talk about it again. You can watch that other video, but if you want to get them extra crispy at the end, you need to put them on a cloth such as this, a paper towel, and spread them out. Because otherwise, if they bunch up, you'll get soggy onions. And you don't want soggy onions. You want crispy onions. Now, Uncle Roger think this crunchy texture go well with egg mm. fried rice. Give it good mouth feel. <laughs> now, let's finish this bad boy off. Get your most beautiful, big, juicy, Walk. He talk about walk so sexual. Beautiful, big, juicy, juicy. I think this nephew Joshua turned on by his walk more than he turned on by his girlfriend. I wonder how their relationship is. Nephew Joshua, do you use finger tests on your girlfriend also? Drizzle in three tablespoons of vegetable oil and begin heating over medium high. Swirl the oil around your wok and keep heating. Until seasoning the, the wok. Good. Swirl it around you again. supposed then to pour your oil out. From there, I added three and a half tablespoons of cold smoked duck fat. Cold smoked duck fat. Fui yo. So fancy. <laughs> Adding some cold smoked duck fat to this is a very nice touch. Duck fat or cooking with lard, with fat, adds a lot of flavor. You literally just take some rendered out duck fat, place it in a small bowl, wrap it in plastic wrap, insert a tube of a cold smoke gun, such as a Breville. A... Nephew Joshua just flexing on us right now. First the little man on horse polo, then the Rolex, then the cold smoke gun. Hiya. Who this cooking video for? Billionaire people. Uncle Roger didn't know I have to own a yacht. 
to watch this video. I think he made so much money from all the Bitcoin he bought. For the average kitchen, having a lot of these extra tools is not a necessity. Although it does help make things better, it helps you to improve dishes. Having a smoke gun though is not a necessity for the average kitchen or for the average house. Having a torch to make let's say creme brulee or anything, this could work for desserts and pastries and things like this. But before you know it, because you can spend a lot of money uh, in the kitchen with kitchen equipment, you'll be wanting say a sous vide machine or anything like this. Now that a sous vide machine I would say is a necessity. And if of course you have enough money and space, then I would suggest getting a rationale oven. Rationale ovens are combi ovens. They're some of the best in the world. There are many different companies, but Rationale is quite common to see in the kitchen. Also, if you have enough money, I would suggest getting a Josper grill. Josper grills are some of the best in the industry. There's a lot of brands, but Jospers are a good brand. I've used one in London as well as in France, and they are fantastic. At the end of the day, not all these extra tools are a necessity. You can still make something with basic items in the kitchen. Wrap it in plastic wrap, insert a tube of a cold smoke gun, such as... And the way he loading this smoke gun, I can tell nephew Joshua smoked weed before. Then let it sit for five minutes and repeat until it's as smoky as you like it. Maybe a little overboard, but just trust Papa. Anyway, heat that over medium high heat. Add in four cloves of thinly sliced garlic, two finely diced shallots, two finely Shallot, diced red good chilies. These chili, are red good, fresh correct, chilies, correct. And two green onions, which have been finely. Oh, green onions. So soon, Uncle Roger like green onion as garnish. But at least he not putting green onion first thing into <laughs> pan like Jamie Oliver. You can add green onions earlier to the dish, but at least for me, there's a reason why I add them a little later on or for garnish, is for color. And you can, if you cook this long enough, the green onions will turn brown. And stir fry over medium heat until all of your vegetables are beautifully softened and... Okay, look like the green onion, not wilting. Good, good, this one okay. It is wilting. It just hasn't lost its color yet. Pack two to three large eggs, whisk them together till homogenized, then add them to your stir fried vegetables. Add three and a half to four cups of already cooked cold rice. Then add two teaspoons of ground white pepper and two teaspoons. There's three teaspoons to a tablespoon, and that looked more like a tablespoon or a little more of a tablespoon. White pepper has a very distinctive flavor and smell, very different from black pepper. Personally, I prefer black pepper. White pepper, the best way to describe it for me is it has a very pungent smell. It, um, well, it stinks a little bit. It's very strong. It's freshly cracked white pepper is very strong. Mm, that is the most beautiful sight to see the waterfall of MSG go into the rice. Fuyo, so nice when Uncle Roger go to therapy and they ask me to think of my happy place. This is it. But again, nephew Joshua, don't need measure. Just sprinkle, just sprinkle. Toss it all together, turn off the heat, and finally grab some strawberry jam what? and... <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke, all right. Phew. <laughs> Uncle Roger thought he all stepped correct so far, but then suddenly joined the dark side with Jamie Oliver and his chili jam. <sighs> Almost gave Uncle Roger a heart attack. Not gonna make that mistake. <laughs> Ooh. It's not good throwing things out the window. Sometimes, you know, if you forget and you're mowing the yard, it can happen. <laughs> things can happen when you leave things in the grass. If he has grass. Don't just throw a spoon. Throw out the whole bottle of jam also. Instead, add your fried rice sauce from earlier. Stir and toss that together until evenly good, distributed. Good. And then just pop your fried rice onto a nice plate. Hit it with your incredibly quippy fried shallots, some thinly sliced mm. green Ah, onion. green onion as garnish onion. again. That correct? That good? So he double green onion. Not bad. That we taste tested. <laughs> See what I mean by the color contrast? You don't have to add something else to make it taste good, but at least for, just for the contrast, it's nice. Because if you compare this to Chef Wong's, and of course, he's an expert in Chinese cuisine, but his fried rice was very nice. It looked beautiful. That we taste test this. Okay, so that's what we saw, how that video went. You can tell that Joshua has been practicing because in our last video, which was a newer video, Joshua caught the spoon when he tried to flip it. This looks pretty good. Spoon. Correct, correct. Mm. In Asia, many people, we eat rice with spoon. Uncle Roger don't know why in Western country, so many people eat rice with fork. They use fork to scoop up rice. 
Fuck for poking, not scooping. You want to scoop, you use spoon. Use right tool for right purpose. Do you also use hair dryer to blow leaf? Hiya. <laughs> Niece and nephew. If rice in bowl, eat with chopstick. If rice in plate, eat with spoon. If rice in Jamie Oliver kitchen, throw it out. <laughs> Since Uncle Roger has been hard on Jamie for so long, it would have been nice if Jamie would have challenged him at least once. Um, you know, but that's how things are. I think Joshua likes his egg fried rice, doesn't he? The MSG in this really hits. It hits different. You got the yeah. sp Of course, you eating salt on crack. Of course it hit. This is one of the more deeply flavored fried rice that I've had. The one that Uncle Roger did looks very good, but it's also very basic in flavor. This is intense. It's layered. It's got many, many layers of flavor. Uncle Roger, I want to know, how did I do? What a way to like burn Uncle Roger is that, you know, he made his, it was good, but it was very basic. It just looked very basic, very bland. It's just, we have to watch uh, Uncle Roger's video of making egg fried rice to see if it is basic, um, but you know, it's just. This egg fried rice, so many steps, got deep frying, got cold smoke duck fat. Take too long if you have hungry kid and you make Joshua egg fried rice, he starved to death. Uncle Roger fried rice, basic, but you can do in 10 minutes. So simple. This fried rice, so much more work, but taste wise, Uncle Roger have to admit, it probably tastes better. It already have good work, hey? but smoked duck fat give it even more mm. smoky flavor. It would have been nice if he added, say, maybe a little bit of meat or a little bit of duck to this since he added duck fat to it. And many different texture with the crunch. It have two types of spring onion, raw oh. and cooked. Hmm. Uncle Roger a poof. Mm. Uncle Roger will call him Uncle Joshua. But I know he also like to be called Papa. Papa no like. Papa keys. Papa's favorite cheat code, trust Papa. But Papa Joshua sound a bit sexual. I just feel bad for his cleaner. Need to clean up 45 different measuring bowl. If you could chef, next time, just throw random shit in pan. Because if you measure so many things, too many things to clean, people see your recipe. They don't want to cook it. Not everybody can afford cleaner and Rolex like you. The last recipe that we reviewed of Joshua making the biryani, if you actually look at the ingredient list alone, Ooh, I mean, it looked like a beautiful dish, but oof, you're going to have to put some work into that to make that dish. And you can make things simpler. You can make things easier. B-roll. Hip hop is best music for egg fire rice. <laughs> so stupid. Don't worry, Uncle Roger single. Very confident in my right hand. Oh shit. <laughs> my phone just fell from the chuff. Overall, I think Joshua did a very good job. It looked good, maybe a little clumpy. It was a little too wet, but overall it looked good. And I'm sure it tasted good. That's the only thing that we can't do is taste. That's the ultimate test. Then again, if it's burnt or something is burnt, we can't taste that either and it can look nice. In any case, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to help support the channel or if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you want to join Patreon or the channel membership as well, that helps out greatly. Be sure to check out this video here and I will see you guys again very soon. Until next time, take care. <laughs>